Microsoft just unveiled a quantum chip that could change everything. Majana One, a processor built to scale to a million qubits and solve problems no supercomputer on Earth can touch. If they pull this off, quantum computing could go from futuristic theory to real-world impact in just a few years. So, let's back up for a second and talk about what exactly Microsoft is announcing here. Essentially, they've introduced this fancy device they're calling Majorana One, or sometimes the world's first quantum processing unit, QPU, powered by a topological qubit. It's all built around a special type of material known as a topoconductor, a new word that you probably haven't heard in everyday conversation. Topoconductors are key because they help create these exotic quasiparticles called Majorana Zero Modes, MZMs. For almost a century, Majorana particles were purely theoretical, only predicted in textbooks. But thanks to Microsoft's approach of combining a semiconductor, indium arsenide, with a superconductor, aluminum, cooling them down near absolute zero and then applying magnetic fields, they've managed to make these Majorana Zero Modes appear in nanowires on demand. Each wire ends up with MZMs on its two ends, and that's the building block for their qubits. But why does this even matter? Well, these Majorana-based qubits are supposed to be more stable and far less error-prone than many other qubits out there. Error correction is a huge deal in quantum computing because once you start having thousands or even millions of qubits, all that noise and interference in the environment can really mess up calculations. Microsoft's big claim is that topological qubits incorporate error protection right in the hardware, effectively making these qubits resistant to stray electrons, electromagnetic radiation, and all sorts of environmental disruptions. The new measurement approach is also pretty slick. Usually, to perform quantum operations, you have to rotate qubits in very precise angles with custom analog signals. But with these topological qubits, Microsoft can just measure the quantum state through digital pulses, like switching something on and off, without needing all these complex analog controls. The way they do it is by hooking up each end of the Majorana nanowire to a quantum dot, which is basically a tiny semiconductor device. By measuring how the dot's capacitance changes, which depends on parity, whether there's an even or odd number of electrons, they can figure out the qubit's state. They use microwaves to detect this shift, and because the difference in charge is pretty sizable, they can do it reliably. Initially, they saw about a 1% error probability in their measurements, but they're confident that can be lowered significantly. Another highlight here is that they have, in fact, put eight of these qubits on a single Majorana One chip. Eight might sound small when we're talking about a million qubit goal, but it's the foundation. Microsoft believes that using this approach, they can tile these Tetron devices, these single qubit units, together in arrays, eventually building bigger arrays, like four by two, then 27 by 13 and so on, until they reach a system that can be fully fault tolerant and handle a million qubits. According to Microsoft, once you have a million qubit chip, you can solve all sorts of monstrous computational problems, things like designing self-healing materials, figuring out catalysts that can break down harmful pollutants, or even discovering new enzymes that might help agriculture. That's not just a random tech fantasy. Microsoft cites the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, as providing some strong validation for their approach. DARPA has a program called Underexplored Systems for Utility Scale Quantum Computing, US2QC, and it's basically scouring the industry for quantum solutions that could reach practical utility scale power. Microsoft is one of only two companies that have progressed to the final phase of that program, and they've signed an agreement with DARPA to build what they're calling a fault-tolerant prototype, basically the stepping stone to a full commercial system. And while this breakthrough is already shaking up the quantum world, AI is transforming industries faster than ever. That's why we've partnered with Growth School to bring you something valuable. 2024 and early 2025 have been unpredictable. Jobs come and go and financial security is never guaranteed. That's why multiple income streams aren't just smart, they're essential. AI can help and with the right skills, you could earn an extra $10,000 a month. Now, if you're wondering how to get started, Growth School has something really cool. They're offering a three hour hands-on AI training well, you'll learn to use over 25 powerful AI tools. Normally, it's paid, 
but the first 1,000 AI Revolution viewers can join for free using the link in the description. On top of that, you'll get $500 worth of bonus resources just for signing up. The training covers everything, job hunting tips, salary negotiation, mastering Excel, even content creation. And it's not just for tech experts. Whether you're in finance, sales, marketing, HR, or even still studying, this can work for you. Growth School has already helped millions of people level up, and this could be your turn to stay ahead in an AI-driven world. So, if this sounds like your kind of thing, hit the link below to grab your free spot. Plus, don't miss joining Growth School's WhatsApp community. It's a great place to connect with others diving into AI too. All right, now back to our Majorana One quantum ship. The industry, by the way, has taken notice. You have folks from Terra Quantum, Multiverse Computing, Sandbox AQ, and Omdia all chiming in on this, saying it's a genuine breakthrough that underscores how important it is for companies to get ready for quantum computing. Even from a security standpoint, one interesting point raised is that if topological qubits can accelerate the timeline for fault-tolerant quantum, it also accelerates the timeline by which today's encryption might be at risk. So we have to prepare for post-quantum cryptography. People like Ian Beveridge from Entrust are basically saying, look, if quantum arrives sooner, we'd better hurry up and secure our data. And from a purely business angle, Experts are warning that many NISQA series systems, noisy intermediate scale quantum, might be overshadowed if Microsoft's hardware can ramp to fault tolerance faster. So it's kind of a time to make it arms race in the quantum field. Now, from a more technical perspective, some folks, like Omdia's Sam Lucero, point out that these topological qubits are unique because they rely on material properties instead of engineering waveforms. And that's a big deal if you're trying to build from the ground up. Classical computers rely on transistors in silicon chips, and we had to figure out exactly the right doping, doping concentrations and all that. Similarly, quantum might need its own transistor moment, and it looks like Microsoft is aiming to fill that role with topo conductors. Also, it's worth mentioning that measurement-based quantum computing, where you use measurements to drive computation instead of applying a bunch of rotating gates, has some real advantages when it comes to scaling and error correction. If you think about it, having to fine-tune analog signals for each individual qubit is a total nightmare if you ever want a million qubits. But if you can just rely on quick digital pulses, it might simplify how you wire everything up. Chaitan Nayak, a Microsoft technical fellow leading this push, said they basically stepped back and asked, what properties does the transistor of the quantum age need? Then they designed everything from the materials up to the architecture with that question in mind. Matthias Troyer, another Microsoft technical fellow, described the vision of quoking these quantum systems up to AI so you can effectively speak the language of nature. That is, you just say, hey, I need a brand new molecule that, <laughs> for example, breaks down microplastics into harmless byproducts, and the quantum computer can run that simulation accurately. Then an AI model helps interpret the results and refine the approach. You skip the guesswork and the decades of lab experiments or massive HPC calculations. He even said it could lead to a recipe for what you want to make right away. Of course, a million qubits stuffed into a chip that can fit in the palm of your hand sounds unbelievably futuristic. But Microsoft believes topological hardware solves some of the biggest size and control issues. Traditional superconducting qubits, for instance, might require a chip the size of an entire room, or even bigger, because you have to manage each qubit individually with all these cables. Microsoft's topological approach, they say, is way more compact so you can see a path to a million qubits. Right now though, they're at eight qubits on a single chip designed with space for more. They also have a roadmap. Show single qubit devices, then two qubit devices, then a small array like four by two, demonstrate quantum error detection on two logical qubits, and finally scale up to full quantum error correction. The synergy with DARPA's quantum benchmarking initiative also matters. They're working with labs like NASA Ames, Oak Ridge, Los Alamos, and others to verify that these architectures can genuinely produce results beyond classical computers. If they prove it, it'd be a huge milestone in quantum computing, one that changes the game in fields like materials science, uh, drug discovery, agriculture, um, the environment, and basically any scenario requiring massive parallel computations that classical supercomputers can't handle. From the third party 
perspectives, uh, we see experts praising Microsoft for tackling such a challenging approach. But they're also urging businesses to get on the quantum bandwagon now, uh, like get your cryptographic transitions planned out, figure out how quantum might integrate with your HPC workflows, or consider how quantum might supercharge AI efforts. Because if fault tolerant quantum really does show up faster than we expected, you don't wanna be left behind with old encryption or old algorithms that are easily broken by quantum. It's also worth noting that Microsoft is not ditching all other quantum approaches. They still have partnerships with Atom Computing and Quantinuum for near-term solutions that use conventional qubits. But Mirana One is their big bet on a machine that might solve what they call really meaningful industrial scale problems. So that's basically the scoop. We're seeing not just a qubit, but a new state of matter, topological superconductivity harnessed by new measurement methods that let you do entirely digital control. The plan is to scale from single qubit devices to full fault tolerant machines, and big names like DARPA and a bunch of quantum leaders are saying this could be the real deal. If you think about it, it's a bit like when semiconductors replaced vacuum tubes. Nobody could fully grasp all the implications until it happened, and then bam, computers shrank from entire rooms to your pocket. We might see a similar story with quantum. Topological qubits, if successful, might be that catalyst with the potential to bring about the next wave of the digital revolution, one that merges quantum, AI, and advanced computation. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next one.